Hi, my name is Chris Dancy. I live here in Houston, Texas, in a neighborhood called, called Wimbledon Estates. We're about 800 homes strong, uh, have been recently affected by a couple of the floods, uh, but my family and I love it here. It's such a great and warm community. One of the things that hit me when I realized that a lot of us were gonna be locked in our homes is how much uncapped potential there is in your neighbors. I'm sort of known for being into digital health, so I actually have a lot of medical equipment. I'm also a little bit of a planner, so as of December and even January, I have been making sure that I had the proper food and medical supplies. During this time, I think it's important to leverage the people who are right around us, the people in our neighborhoods who are geographically close uh, so that we don't go into groups over 10 and we can start to support each other. What I'm gonna do now is give you a full overview of a very simple system that you can deploy in your neighborhood right now by clicking a link that's attached to this video. That link will allow you to create what's called an Airtable database. This Airtable database runs everything. It's already been configured. You don't have to do anything to it. Or if you wanna tinker around, you can even add some extra features. It's really simple. You geeks all over the world right now are gonna love this system. The first thing I'm gonna do is talk about the structure of the system. The system is really made up of two web forms. One web form to volunteer for help and a second web form to request help and then the back end that supports both of those. I chose a web form over a native app or anything else because I wanted anyone at any techno technology level to make this as simple as possible. So let's look at the volunteer form. I'm gonna go ahead and launch my browser and go to the form to sign up as a volunteer. So the first thing you'll see on the volunteer form is a little bit of information about the neighborhood and the person running that system. Then it's gonna ask you for simple things like, your name, you're the volunteer. Put my name in there. Next, it's gonna ask me for my address. Next, it's gonna ask me for my phone number. Then it's gonna ask me for my email. Then it's gonna say, ask me as a volunteer, what skills do the volunteers in your neighborhood have, both primary and secondary? Primary are the things people are most gifted at that they could help out right away. I'm okay at technical. For secondary skills, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I could definitely do some food prep. I make a mean chili. And I'm gonna say that I could probably drive someone. And what else could I do? I'm not a bad caregiver, on, depending on the day. Uh, then I could I write any information about myself. I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, I'm known for digital health and I would love to support the people around me. Next, it's gonna ask me if I have any resources. So the resources are different than our skills. The resources are the things that we may or may not have in our home that we could share with our neighbors if they need it. So I actually have some surgical masks and some N95 masks. I actually have a pulse oximeter and a thermometer. I actually have some sterile wipes and disposable gloves. I'm a prepper. Uh, <laughs> it's got such a dirty connotation. Uh, I've got a portable humidifier. Uh, and cold and flu meds. So I've got a lot that I could offer to folks if they get short. Next, how do I wanna be contacted from this, uh, anyone requesting help? I could say they can contact me through next door, they contact my email, uh, phone, and do I want my information shared? So this basically means, do you want the information you've just shared, shared with other volunteers in your neighborhood and or other people in your neighborhood who are requesting help? And I'm gonna go ahead and say, sure, on a case-by-case -case basis, and hit submit. It's as simple as that. The next thing I'm gonna do is show how all of this works together. So to get started, I want to focus on Nextdoor. My neighborhood uses Nextdoor to gather information, share tips and tricks about what's going on all around us. There's a main feed to Nextdoor that shows my neighborhood and neighborhoods around me, but there's a separate feed that shows me just my neighborhood. It's geographically locked, so we're not gonna get people who are outside of our neighborhood. It's literally our neighbors. In here, my neighbors post everything from the types of donations they're looking for or need or things they found, like we find a lot of cats in my neighborhood, uh, and other things, uh, birds, you know, scary people we see on the streets. But what I did was I created a group within Nextdoor. This group is called Wimbledon Estates COVID, and what it does is it helps me coordinate the volunteers within my neighborhood. If someone's looking for help, we can also point them to the help form, which we'll look at next. 
This also is a place where I schedule meetings for my neighbors for us all to get together on video and talk about things we're seeing and ways that we can support each other. But now let's get to the good stuff. As you know, I just went ahead and logged myself as a volunteer. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the uh, database. So the first thing you'll see in the database is a list of all of my neighbors who have signed up to help. This information is available to you. You can go ahead and use this uh, template right away, but it's all demo information. I'm not showing you my actual neighbors. Uh, you'll see there's a couple entries here for myself showing you how these different things work. And you'll notice that this is where I just logged myself earlier saying I'm known for digital health. The things that I said I could supply to my neighbors are here and easily viewable. And then how I wanna be contacted. So super, super simple way. It's all driven by a web form. So if you wanna customize any of this, it's very easy to do. You would just go in here to grid view, go down to neighborhood response form, and from here you can change the text, change any fields. Maybe I want to add another field in here, and it would do put that field on their public form. I encourage you to really get involved. This really is not the type of video where I'm going to explain how to do Airtable uh, database work, but I can promise you right now, if you can use a spreadsheet, you can use Airtable. So that's it. I filled out a, a form to volunteer earlier, and here my data is in my database right now. It's, it's literally that simple. The next thing we're going to look at, and there's a, a web version of this form too if you don't want to use mobile. It looks very similar to the one we just looked at. But the next thing we're going to do is look at how that data we collected from the volunteers can be utilized and organized. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at skills. If you remember, I asked during sign up what my primary skill was and my secondary skill. So right away, as the person sitting on this side of the technology, I come in here to skills and see all the people in my neighborhood who have specific skills. So if I need caregivers or food prep or technical people, I can see them all very quickly within this view. Um, it's, it's a really simple way to organize the people in my neighborhood who have the specific skills that we might be looking for. But more importantly, maybe a neighbor needs food or doesn't have a digital thermometer. They've been sold out all over the place. I'm gonna show you how the equipment and resources are logged. So right away, I'm gonna to go to the equipment tab and you'll see all the equipment that was available in the dropdown. But more importantly, you'll see all the people who have copies or pieces of these equipment or supplies. I can even come in here and look at it in a gallery view and see very quickly and this is great for people who might want to pick the type of equipment they need or if I need to know very quickly, hey, is there someone in my neighborhood who has extra rubber gloves or someone in my neighborhood who has a spare room with a private bathroom if we need to isolate someone, um, oxygen, anything that you can think of. More importantly, this is completely configurable. If I wanted to come in here and add uh, another record to help my neighbors out, maybe we find out that uh, having... Uh, Vicks Vapor Rub is a good thing. I can do that from here as well. So I can say this is a, a, a drug or support. I'm going to call this Vicks Vapor Rub. And that's it. It's that simple. So hopefully you'll see that there's a lot of ways that you can support your neighbors and make it easy for them to support each other. But now we're at that big part support. So we've collected our neighbors. We've organize them in a way that we can understand who is where, who knows what, and who has what. But how do our neighbors get help? So let's look at that process real quick. That's also video one if you want to go back and get just a short version of that. So I'm going to go ahead and launch my notepad again, and I'm just going to go to the help form. Again, the help form looks a lot like the other uh, form for uh, volunteering. So I'm going to go ahead and put my name in. I'm going to put a request type in. I need help my phone number, and I put an address or just a phone number, and I'm going to say, I need a thermometer. Uh, mine is broke. And then as a person re requesting help, I can also log my temperature or any symptoms I might be having. This is important if you want to make sure that the people who come visit you are properly protected with personal protective gear. Also, you can add an attachment. So maybe you want to add a picture of a specific medicine that you're out of or a specific type of food or support that you need. I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. And now that's done. So now we go back to our database 
and go to our event logging, you'll see all the people who have requested help and what type of help they need. So right away, we can see here that Chris Dancy today came in, asked for help, said they needed a thermometer and theirs is broken. Didn't give us any information about them. So the first thing I can do is I can just come in here and assign this to one of my neighbors. So maybe I wanna give this to Ramita who has some, a thermometer. I'm sorry about that. Now that that's been done, Ramita's been assigned this, and then Ramita will get an email or have a view on who to contact and what they need. I hope this system and its simplicity uh, makes sense to you and your neighborhood. Uh, I encourage you, if you need help with any of these things, to reach out to me. Uh, I think you'll love using Airtable. I think your volunteers and the people in your neighborhood who, who need help will love having you there to help them. Uh, you know, when I think about my life uh, in the 80s, uh, I went through a period of time in my early 20s where during the HIV epidemic, we literally re resorted to helping each other. We built buying clubs and we built ways to help and check on each other when people were afraid to come visit us. Um, and then my entire life has been about building technology that really supports each other. I hope in this time that all of you find a way whether it's just reaching out and volunteering to make someone lunch or mowing someone's lawn, we all can come together. And I hope technology makes that possible. I hope we see technology as a platform for each other. If you need anything, my contact information is all over the web, and I wish you guys the best. We can do this. Be strong.